Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Employers beginning to reimagine post-pandemic work plans. SUV drives through a Christmas parade killing five people and injuring 40. St. John continues to rebuild after last year's major cyber attack. Austria enters lockdown to combat against rising COVID-19 cases. 80 thieves barge into a San Francisco Nordstrom. School in New Brunswick removes washroom doors to try and curb smoking and vandalism. Two missionary hostages released in Haiti, 15 still being held. To begin, across Canada, many have moved their work to online platforms throughout the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, as many prepare for a post-pandemic world, employers are put under pressure to embrace remote work, since employees do not want to return to the office. Some say that they will be embracing and including new opportunities for working remotely. Microsoft Canada, for example, will be utilizing a hybrid work schedule. Over in Milwaukee, a festive Christmas parade turned tragic as an SUV drove through it. The vehicle sped through barricades, killing at least five people and injuring upwards of 40. At this time, investigations are taking place. The driver may have been fleeing from another crime when he hit the parade attendees. However, it is an ongoing investigation which is still in its early stages. Notably, a person of interest is currently in custody. Turning now to St. John, New Brunswick. Last year, on November 26, the city was forced offline for almost two weeks. This was because they were hit by a major cyber attack. Ultimately, the city decided not to pay the ransom demanded by the cyber criminals. These were the estimated to be between 17 and 20 million dollars. Since then, the after effects of these attacks are still impacting operations today. This past summer, city office employees still could not print and the police could not generate statistics on crime occurrences. Although some of these abilities have returned, an official city spokesperson stated that it could take many years to recover completely from the cyber attacks. In other news, on Monday, Austria went into a national lockdown to try and fight against the rising COVID-19 cases. Currently, average daily deaths have tripled and intensive care units and hospitals are beginning to reach capacity. The lockdown is projected to last 10 days, but the country might extend this to 20 days. During this time, people can only leave their homes for reasons including buying groceries, visiting the doctor, exercising, and other essential purposes. Meanwhile, in the San Francisco Bay Area, some 80 individuals stormed a Nordstrom at the Broadway Plaza Outdoor Mall. These individuals pulled up in ski masks and were seen carrying crowbars and other weapons. They entered the department store taking as much as they could before fleeing in cars. Only three individuals were arrested, one of which possessed a firearm. This incident comes a day after other high-end stores within San Francisco's Union Square were broken into by another mass of people. In a controversial decision, Tantramar Regional High School in Sackville, New Brunswick decided to remove the entrance door to student washrooms. By removing the door, people walking by could see stall doors and urinals. The school claims that they did this because they were trying to stop students from vaping, smoking, and from vandalizing. On Friday, the school stated that they will reinstall the doors and make new rules instead. Parents and students expressed their outrage at this major invasion of privacy. Some students were suspended when they expressed concerns to the principal. Later, these students protested at the school who responded by calling the police on these students. Lastly, 17 members from Christian Aid Ministries were kidnapped by the 400 Mawozo gang on October 16th. The group includes five children as well as their Haitian driver. Two of the 17 members have been released, though no information about why they were released or their identities has been provided. The 400 Mawozo gang is demanding $1 million per person or else they will kill the hostages. Meanwhile, the U.S. government has urged U.S. citizens to leave the country. Additionally, Canada announced that they will be pulling out almost all of the personnel from its embassy in Haiti. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content.